What makes a good construction superintendent? So as a part of this video, we're gonna cover what are the 16 key items that it takes to be good or a good superintendent? And how can a superintendent take those 16 items and also be firm but fair and connect in a vulnerable way with the people on the project site in a psychologically safe environment? So stay with us, because that's what we're gonna discuss right now. I am super into lists. I love lists. I think it's a jam. So we're going to go ahead and get this done. Number one, to be a good superintendent, you have to keep a to-do list and have a personal organization system. In fact, in the description below, I'll also link you to videos that will help you with that. But the best of the best have to-do lists, are focused, and have a personal organization system. Number two, superintendents, the good ones, really know how to connect with people. They know how to develop relationships. They know how to develop rapport. They know how to connect, right? They know how to lead a group of people. They have probably read How to Win Friends and Influence People. They've probably read the Patrick Lencioni books, but the great superintendents really know how to work with and through people towards a common objective. The I, I'm going to push, yell, throw my hard hat, superintendent. Days of old are gone. It's not going to fly anymore. Supers have to be good with people to be good. Number three, supers have got to know how to be a part of a team. There is an old image of supers going rogue and doing whatever they want and heading off in this direction and that and the project managers got to go through a rope and lasso them in and bring them back and really control their superintendents. Well, that, again, is a method of the past. Nowadays, we want supers that can really be a part of a team and be an ideal team player, which means that they're humble, hungry, and smart. And that means that the superintendent will have an idea of how the project should go, but we'll ask the team, how do we want to do it together? And we'll really gather that information, listen to people, make a collaborative plan, communicate that plan to everyone so everyone can move forward with it, and then adjust together with the team moving forward. The good and great superintendents really know how to work as a part of a team. Number four, they know what they're doing and they learn. Meaning the great superintendents have received training, they've received builder training, they've done layout, they've done lift drawings in the field, they've done frontline quality management, they've done frontline safety management, and every year they're doing at least $1,500 worth of training, if not all the way up to 15,000, right? They're doing scheduling trainings, they're doing lean trainings, they're doing trainings on safety, they're doing trainings on scaffolding. The best builders, the really, really good ones, the good superintendents, they are constantly learning throughout the year. Number five, and this is a big one for me, they are well read. I once heard a superintendent say, why would I read a book, Jason? I haven't read a book since I was 16 years old. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is not gonna work. We need people that know what they're doing. The best of the best in this industry are well read. They read books on lean. They read books on leadership. They read books on teaming. They read books on business. They read books like how big things get done, right? They read the Toyota way. They read the goal. They read these books that frame their mindset because, and here's the big part, the project will simply be a representation of the superintendent's mindset. So good superintendents are well read. Number six, and this is huge, like this is a big one. Superintendents make and own and run their own schedules, right? So you can have a scheduler. I'm not dissing that position. You can have help, especially on large projects. You're going to need some help. However, it should never, ever, ever be a, I've got the plan in my head and I tell a scheduler how to put the schedule together in this separate format that I don't understand. No, 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 no. The superintendent must be able to use the software, put in the activities, create flow, understand the scheduling concepts, and have a very good understanding of how to do it, and be able to communicate that through all of the last planner meetings. There is no such thing as a superintendent that doesn't schedule. That's like a hairdresser without scissors, right? So it's just not a thing. You can be a superintendent that owns and runs the schedule that has help, but you never have somebody do it for you. Number seven, good superintendents and great ones, I might add, manage procurement. They do not say, 
hey, it's the project manager and project engineer's job. That's their department. This is my department. That is not a thing. Logistics and getting materials to the site is a part of your department. It is your role. You better be in a meeting every week with the PM and the project engineer at a minimum going through the procurement log, going through the supply chains, calling people, being responsible, and aligning labor and materials at the point of intersection when you need them to start on the job. So good and great supers manage material procurement. Number eight, they teach people. Now this might seem a little bit basic, but like I said in a previous video, back in the day we yelled and taught. People said stop yelling, so we stopped yelling and we stopped teaching. <laughs> Superintendents really, really need to keep teaching and learn how to always be showcasing their best practices and transferring those to the next generation. Nine superintendents better be lean thinkers. It, we are way past the point of not getting into this. That means we're reading the books. That means we're visiting LCI. We're going to Congress. That means we're learning about lean methodologies. We're doing trainings. The best superintendents do lean training and implement lean on their projects. Number 10, superintendents lead great meetings. So you cannot be a great superintendent and then just shove it off to the field engineer, project engineer to run the meeting. You've got to know how to do it yourself. In the description below, I will link you to some videos on how to lead great meetings and some books you can reference if you want to get more training. Number 11, use technology. I just have a little bit of a surprise for everybody. Technology is key. You cannot go be a superintendent and not know how to use computers. You need to know how to use computers, know how to use the office products on the computer like Word and Excel and Microsoft PowerPoint. You need to be able to use your scheduling software. You need to be able to use Bluebeam. You need to know how to use snipping tools, how to send emails, how to write an email, right? All of this technology is key. That is your job. This old timey like, hey, I'm a super, I don't know how to use tech, that ain't gonna fly. All of us nowadays who are supers, grew up in a period where we grew up with technology. It is time good supers use technology. 12. Superintendents hold people accountable. A superintendent that can't hold people accountable is useless to the point of not even being needed. Like we do not need people to say, hey, do this, do that. We that People already know what they're supposed to be doing if they have a good visual plan and you followed the previous steps. Now, everyone needs to know that the superintendent is going to make sure it happens together in a collaborative system. Superintendents must hold people accountable. Number 13, you must be a little bit stubborn and vulnerable. Here's what I mean by that. When it comes to the conditions of the site, how clean it is, how organized it is, how safe it is, you must be so stubborn about that that no one is going to change your mind. Even if you feel all alone, you must control the project circumstances. But we do not command and control uh, people. We command and control circumstances. So when it comes to people, that's when we get to show up and be vulnerable. No, I will not tolerate an unclean job. No, I will not tolerate a lack of safety. But when I'm talking to you, I will be approachable. We can have a conversation. I will mentor you. I will enable you as a contractor to do it your own way, have flexibility and create a safe environment. The only thing I'm inflexible and stubborn about are the expectations. How is up to you? But what we're going to do is up to me. So you must be stubborn and vulnerable at the same time. Number 14, you must have really good builder experience and be a builder to do this role, which means that you must have 15 good builder experience. I don't care what kind of experience you have. It must have been good experience. You must have two projects under your belt, having run remarkable projects with good results for you to consider yourself a good superintendent. It's not a big deal if you're not there. Let's get there. You must, to be good, have good representative experience in the past. And number 16, you must be organized. Here's a quick little thought from Jason, in case you asked. I hope you did. First of all, if you are wanting this uh, information and you want to talk to me, or if you want to ask questions, please comment in the video below. I would love for you to do that. So, in in my opinion, and again, you asked because you're here, right? Um, you cannot take a superintendent that has a messy bedroom, messy bathroom, the truck, there's uh, coffee all over the place and old cups and soda cans and banana peels falling out the side with a messy desk with a desktop that has icons all over the screen and a phone that says when you call that person, hey, this person's uh, voicemail box is full and cannot be reached by now. You can't take a person like that and expect them to go organize a multi-million or multi-hundred million or multi-billion dollar project. It's not a thing. They must be organized. And so if a superintendent follows these guidelines, he or she will drive, not push. 
push. I love that analogy because when you're driving with someone, they're in the other seats and you're moving forward and you have motivation to get where you're going and you're maintaining a good speed. When you push someone, you're pushing them and they're gonna topple over, turn around, and you're gonna fight, right? Superintendents who use these techniques are driving forward with urgency, they're not pushing people. And so I hope you've enjoyed these 16 key steps. Dig into them, I hope you love them. I'm going to link you in the description below to the book called Elevating Construction Superintendents. All of those concepts are in there. It's on audio as well, you'll have those links. I really really hope you enjoy taking your position as a superintendent to the next level so you can be good and you can then take good to great. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.